The countdown wasn't just a routine checklist. This time, every number echoed years of pressure, delay, and doubt. Then, nine, eight, seven. A roar tears across the Florida coast. Seven BE-4 engines ignite in perfect unison, lighting up the sky with that unmistakable blue flame. For the first time ever, New Glenn is not a promise. It's flying within seconds the giant booster breaks the sound barrier. Max Q, where rockets usually reveal their weaknesses, passes clean. Every parameter holds every engine stays locked on track. Inside mission control, you can hear it. The disbelief turning into raw celebration. And then the moment no one thought Blue Origin would reach this soon. Main engine cutoff stage separation. Second stage ignition. All flawless. But the real shock is still ahead. A 300-foot booster bigger than anything in Blue Origin's history, begins its fall back to Earth. The exo-atmospheric flip is clean. The re-entry burn lights perfectly. And as it drops toward the drone ship Jacqueline, the industry holds its breath. Months of delays, years of criticism, billions of dollars, all decided in seconds. Landing burn, ignition, three good engines. And then, like SpaceX in its earliest miracle days, New Glenn lands soft, controlled, historic. For the first time ever, Blue Origin has a reusable orbital class booster in one piece. And the implications hit instantly. SpaceX is no longer alone. The launch market just changed, and Elon Musk absolutely noticed. You're watching Space Update 24 hours, and today we break down what really happened behind New Glenn's first successful flight, why this moment matters far more than the headlines say, and what this means for the future of SpaceX, NASA missions, and the global race to dominate orbital access. Let's dive right in. As New Glenn climbed through the sky, the data streaming into mission control told a story far more important than the applause echoing through the building. Every indicator, engine pressure, vibration, guidance response, held steady. This wasn't luck. This was the first time Blue Origin's most ambitious machine behaved exactly like the engineers had hoped through years of setbacks. Passing 40 seconds, then 50, the booster hit max Q, the point where the atmosphere pushes hardest against the rocket's structure. Most vehicles reveal their weaknesses here. New Glenn didn't flinch. The flight computers kept stability locked in, and the BE-4 Engines, so often criticized for delays and development issues, performed with unusual smoothness. Then came Mach 1. New Glenn went supersonic, slicing through the sky cleanly, and inside mission control, the atmosphere shifted. The cheering didn't come from hype, it came from relief. After so many missed schedules, redesigns, and test failures, Blue Origin finally had a flight worth celebrating. At one minute remaining in the boost phase, the stakes suddenly grew sharper. If New Glenn ever wanted to compete with Falcon 9, it needed more than a successful ascent. It needed to complete the hardest part of reusability, a controlled return from the edge of space. Main engine cutoff approached, engineers braced themselves, and when the BE-4 shut down, the rocket didn't jitter, tilt, or lose its attitude, it held steady. Stage separation, clean. Second stage ignition, clean. The second stage pushed the NASA escapade spacecraft toward its intended trajectory, while the booster, the part that really mattered for Blue Origin's long-term future, began falling back toward Earth. From this moment forward, the mission changed tone. The launch was no longer about lifting payloads. It was about proving Blue Origin's ability to compete in the one area SpaceX dominates, landing and reusing orbital boosters. Downrange, the drone ship Jacqueline waited 375 miles offshore. A huge risk, a huge distance, a huge booster. Nearly every attempt in the industry to land a first-stage rocket of this size, except SpaceX, had failed even Blue Origin's previous New Glenn test, NG-1, never made it this far. As GS-1 drifted through vacuum, the vehicle rotated gracefully using onboard strakes and forward fins. The engineers watching the telemetry could hardly believe it. Body rates were stable, the guidance system was behaving better than simulations predicted, 
and data quality was crisp even at extreme altitude. The XO atmospheric turn completed. Re-entry burn confirmed. Three BE-4 engines lit up once again, firing against the dark to slow the booster as it plunged back into thicker air. Even if the rocket crashed moments later, this alone was a breakthrough. They had outperformed NG-1 by a wide margin, but the booster didn't crash. As it dropped under 100 kilometers, turbulence and heat battered the rocket's structure. The fins fought the air, adjusting and correcting in real time every fluctuation mattered. One bad angle, one late correction, one stutter from the engines, and the mission would join the long list of failed landing attempts in aerospace history. Instead, the trajectory held. Data stayed nominal and the rocket continued descending like a controlled aircraft. At eight minutes, 20 seconds into flight, the moment Blue Origin had been chasing for years, finally arrived landing burn ignition. Three BE-4 engines fired. For the first time ever, New Glenn wasn't just falling toward a target, it was flying itself toward it. The drone ship camera caught the silhouette dropping from the clouds. The booster adjusted, leaned, steadied, and in one fluid sweep, New Glenn touched down upright. A shockwave ran through the entire aerospace community. Not because SpaceX hadn't done it before. SpaceX made it look easy years ago, but because Blue Origin finally showed it can stand in the same arena. And competition changes everything. Launch prices, cadence, access to orbit, NASA contracts, Kuiper deployments, and the expectations for the next decade of spaceflight. Inside mission control, engineers couldn't hold back. Applause broke out again. Some people were openly emotional. Years of skepticism had ended in a single landing burn. The booster stood tall on Jacqueline, its legs locked, engines cooled, guidance system intact. Blue Origin had pulled off the hardest maneuver of the mission on its first serious attempt. Meanwhile, hundreds of miles above Earth, the second stage continued pushing the escapade spacecraft toward its intended path. Seco 2, second engine cutoff, registered as clean payload separation confirmed. Two satellites released exactly as planned. With both mission objectives achieved, payload delivery and a successful landing, Blue Origin's team began discussing the next step, recovering the booster, towing it back to port, and examining its structure inch by inch. This wasn't just about retrieving hardware. It was about proving the dream of reusability wasn't a one-off stunt, but a sustainable system. For years, critics argued Blue Origin talked too much and delivered too little. Today, that narrative cracked. The company had built a functioning, reusable orbital class rocket capable of landing like a veteran. It didn't erase SpaceX's lead, not even close, but it shifted the industry's trajectory. Reusable rockets from multiple companies means lower launch costs, higher cadence, and healthier competition. And that's the message this moment carried. The space industry isn't entering a new chapter because of a launch, a landing, or a headline. It's entering a new chapter because Blue Origin finally proved it belongs at the table, right next to SpaceX, pushing the boundaries of how humanity reaches orbit. What happened today wasn't just a successful launch, it was a shift in momentum. Blue Origin proved that years of silence, redesigns, and frustration can still lead to a breakthrough powerful enough to reshape an entire industry. New Glenn delivered its payloads flawlessly, stuck its first ever landing, and reminded everyone watching, from NASA to SpaceX, that real competition is finally here. But the deeper message goes beyond hardware. This mission was a reminder of how quickly spaceflight evolves when a company refuses to give up. That landing on Jacqueline wasn't only a technical win, it was a statement that the future of orbital access won't belong to a single player. The more companies master reusability, the faster humanity moves forward, and we'll be here to follow every step. If you found this breakdown insightful, hit like, share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Space Update 24 Hours for more deep dive coverage of the missions shaping our future beyond Earth. See you in the next episode.